Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to this valve stem seal replacement of this 454 engine. We've got 16 valves, 16 seals, two valves per cylinder. So, I uh, the process I did for my Honda Civic was to stuff some some of this thin nylon rope into the piston, rotate the engine until the piston came up and held the valves in place. That way, I could compress down the springs, remove the retainer clips, and get to the seals. It's going to be a little more tedious on this 8-cylinder engine. Not as much room as I had on the Honda Civic. The pistons and spark plugs are right there. So I will be trying something a little different, a new tool. This valve holder, which is just a uh, threaded hose that you hook up to your compressor at what I read. Uh, I think 90 PSI is what I've been reading online. Sounds good to me. Pressurizes the cylinder and holds the valves in place instead of having to feed in a bunch of rope. I'm not even sure if this would be enough rope for a 454 engine. It was enough for a uh, 1.6 liter four cylinder Civic engine. So we'll go around, attach this to each cylinder, pressurize it, remove the valve spring, replace the valve seal, and reverse the process. There's those seals. 30 bucks at a local auto parts store. And because the Honda Civic's valve seals were so hard to get off, they had a metal cap on them, which made them really um, a lot stiffer. These might not need a, a special set of pliers, but I got them anyway, uh, since the Civics were so, I had, to, I had to crunch the Civics and make them oval so I can wobble them off. They're stuck on so good. And this is not the right package. It'll be handy. They're only 11 bucks. I'll put some links below. Try them out. And to compress these big old springs, spring compressor tool. Pretty easy thing on the Honda Civic, the 1.6 liter. I just used uh, a socket with a neodymium magnet inside of it. And then I pushed down on top of the spring after the rope was pushed up and holding the bottom of the valves. I could just push down on a socket and yank out the retaining clips from the spring, uh, the spring holder, or whatever that's called. Uh, and then, yeah, I actually just was able to get it back on too by pushing really hard by hand. It probably wasn't the best way to do it, but it was uh, with limited tools and I got it working. So now we're trying it on a whole, a lot bigger engine. We need to get down to these valve covers. First thing you should do is disconnect your battery. You gotta remember that. If I ever feel I'm going to have a hard time putting things back together, I make sure I take a picture beforehand before taking things apart. That's not good. That one's a little melted.
All right, and take the throttle cable off as well. Which is a little clip. And the three small. Got uh, another set of what looks like three eighths inch nuts on each valve cover there. Radiator hose is a little in the way, but shouldn't be too hard to work around that. All right, there it is, ready for the valve covers to come off. Alright, this particular valve holder does not come with a, a fitting, so you need to put in your own. should probably use a little Teflon tape to seal that up, but this came out of something and I want it to go back, so I'm just going to... It's okay if it leaks a little bit. Alright, I'm going to be using a 7 16 with an extension. Bottoms also have these uh, clips for the uh, spark plug wire holders, though I don't use those, not the moment, so I'm going to keep those off. Next step will be taking off the rocker arms. Alright, first rocker arm. Take off the rocker arm. Don't lose the washer that's down in there. Pull out the uh, push rod. And then here we can attach the spring compressor tool. I'm laying all this stuff out onto a clean grocery bag behind me and in the order that they're coming out. So. All the rocker arms go back into the original spot, as well as the uh, push rods. Ooh, that's never good. A little chunk of crud on the end of that. Just some crud at the top and uh, quite a bit down the passageway. Mm, no, it's just this one. 
Oh, a lot of crud up in there. Got one of these street sweeper bristles. Find them on the ground if you pay attention while you're walking around in the city. Boy, I really don't want any of that falling back in there. Okay, I broke it up. It's kind of staying put. There's a whole bunch of chunky carbon that's built around that hole where the push rod goes through. Push rod opening. These are all clear. Definitely gotta give it an oil change after this. These are all clean and nice. I don't know what's going on there. I'm sure some car guys could tell me what's up. Why that one thing has all that carbon build up. It's just right there, it's really bad. Port. Uh, looks pretty good. Yeah, it's just like the surrounding area around the push rod and inside that hole is just gunked up really bad. So I'm gonna break that loose with a vacuum cleaner near and uh, get try and do my best to get that out. Pretty good. Right, everything else looks pretty good. All the channels, oil channels. Not uh, no grit or. So I got those all laid out in order in the way that they need to go back in. All right, let's go ahead and pull the spark plugs here. Alright, first spark plug out on the number 8 cylinder. That's looking pretty grungy, oh my gosh. Kinda looks like oil to me. Maybe. Yeah. It looks, it looks wet. Alright, let's throw this in. Pressurize these these valves. Alright, and right in. Alright, pressurize. So air really can pass the rings, that's okay. Gotta knock these uh Retainers loose. Spring compressor. So far, it's, I think it's freaking nice. I like this. First, you got your, your bar. All right, got a magnet. Hmm. These prongs, the way they're pushing down, it looks like they'd be better if they were angled a little more that way because the top of the spring retainers so yeah a little bit of a flaw in this tool here um, these are just gonna have to be straightened out just I don't know why they would be bent in the first place 
All right, easy fix. Just had to clamp that in the vise, and then this is actually only about five wax with a mallet. There we go. Clip it out. Okay, so there's the spring. And the old ski seal there, which is... Oh. Alright, there's the old seal. Does not look like I need the, uh... Alright, there's the old seal, which is actually still pretty fresh. Might have some use on it, I don't know. This one feeling just a little more rubbery though, so let's go ahead and switch them out and hope that makes a difference. But uh, like the ones on my Civic, some of them are cracked. The fits. Fits a whole lot tighter. Boy, I'm a little nervous about pushing down on that valve. Being very careful with <laughs> that. Oh my god. Come on. Get on there. There we go. Alright. Tight fit. Nice. Alright. Spring back on. Clips back in. It's one and a two. All right, that wasn't too bad. All right, and then on to the next one. Alright, first one done. Alright, here's spark plug number two, or the second cylinder I'm doing. Pretty freaking sooty. It's not oily like the other one. Kind of powdery black.
number two done, or piston number six. But the second one is done here. Third spark plug, looking pretty charry as well, but a little bit bitter. Actually, I really like this pliers. So it makes it makes it a lot easier. All right, and the last one on this side, also looking pretty oily. Well, a little bit anyway, not as bad as the first one. They're looking a little wet. Passenger side done. All done on that side. Let's put the cover back on to keep dust and dirt off it. Well, I work on the other one. Ooh, get a little moisture collecting up on this side. It's not abnormal. Boy, that foamy, milky oil. I do not like seeing that either way. That brings back bad memories. Boy, there's a lot of moisture over there. What the f***? I mean, it all looks beady like it was condensation forming, but why is there so much moisture in the engine? I mean, the oil, engine oil looks great, so it's, I don't think there's going to be a leak going into the engine at all. I think it just got in here from the cold. Alright, ready for round two. Weird, we got the same problem on this side in the same port with that crud buildup, and all the rest of them again look clean. But you know what? It kind of looks like there's a I don't know, maybe that's a pathway for the exhaust or something that like gets hot right there.
gonna have to look up or I don't suppose anybody knows what this stuff is. It's kind of like, almost looks like overspray or like it got spray painted and now it's flaking off. This has me a little concerned. It's on a few springs now. Alright, last set of seals. And all the spark plugs except, uh, all the spark plugs on this side look pretty evenly sooty and carbonized. It was the other side that had two spark plugs that had oil on them. That were slightly oily or wet looking. The first one definitely had oil on it, the second one just a little bit of, a little bit of oil. I will say we are now done with the seal replacement. And no drop to valves. Woohoo! I like this thing. So we all we got left is put the rocker arm you know, put the rocker arms on, the push rods in, or the push rods in, rocker arms, and then we need to remove the lash. Alright. So seals. Push rods and rock arms to put back on. Jeez, it's storming outside. Just in time for a break. Alright, let's go ahead and get these push rods and rock arms back on in order. The, uh, Order that they came out. Okay, now that all the push rods and rock arms are back on, uh, we can tighten down these nuts until there is no lash, which is up and down movement. It's okay if it wiggles side to side. So just want to bring that down until there's no more lash. Maybe that's a little too much. Okay, right about there. So we'll tighten these all down until they are just touching the top of these valves. And then we spin the engine over, I believe, a quarter of a turn. And we'll go through and check them all again. Quarter of a turn, check them all again. Eventually we'll get all the pistons in their compression stroke, I believe, which is where all the valves are down. At their lowest point, which is what you want to tighten to. You don't want to tighten them while the valves are up. Then when they do go down, they're going to loosen. So we want to get all the pistons, all the valves. Well, there's a couple ways to do it. You can go to each piston or you can just do two full rotations and then check every single one of them. On my Civic, I would just rotate the engine until I saw the valves go down all the way. And then I'd remove all the lash. Okay, everything tightened down to remove all the lash. Just a little side to side wiggle. But no up and down movement. In fact, I'm using that little wiggle, side to side wiggle, just to make sure I didn't tighten it too tight. Just want it till it touches the top of that valve. Alright, let's turn the engine over. 
So, in order to get to that crank pulley, to spin it and make sure I'm doing 90 degree turns, I'm either going to need to pull that fan shroud or cut a hole in it. Alright, just took a 4 inch hole saw and made it an opening in my fan shroud here. That way I can get a socket in and turn that uh, crank pulley. Alright, I'm going to go down and rotate that 90 degrees. Okay, now let's go around and find the ones that got loose. There's one. There's one. So two on that side that need to be tightened. That one, maybe just a tiny bit. That one, just a tiny bit. Check is to see if you still spin the push rods if you can grab them. Yeah, that one. That one needs to go way down. Okay, just get tight. Crack that back just a just a hair. Too much. That's good. Side. This one. Let's get that down to where there's no lash. All right, all the lash is gone. Rotate it another 90 degrees. I will do that for two full revolutions to go through all the cycles. All right, there's my second 90. Let's go find the loose ones. Okay, I've gone around two full rotations, removed all the lash out of these rocker arms. There's no up and down movement. Um, but now we need to tighten these down three quarters of a turn for the final adjustment. That's one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. Do that on every one. One quarter, two quarter, three quarters. All right, they all got three quarters of a turn. Let's put the valve covers back on, reattach everything, and give it a test run. I got these, uh, corner support brackets off my water heater when that got uninstalled and I've just been clipping off one side there's one left I have four just clip off one side till it uh, till I got me a two hole tabby I'll just take these tabbies and use those to plug up the hole in the fan shroud a little crude, but it should uh, help keep the air from being pulled in from where it shouldn't be. So do something like that. Got these wires laid out and organized into the two sets of two, or the four sets of two of the different lengths. It even came with an extra wire. 
This was sold as an HEI kit, so it shouldn't have had a coil wire, but it... Um, gonna put these on first, make sure I don't forget. Oops. Take out these old Autolite copper terminal plugs or copper pin plugs. Autolite 25s. Alright, there's the old Autolites copper. And let's put in these fancy iridiums. NGK uh, Iridium's YR5IX Very cool I'll Go ahead and throw these old plugs back in these boxes to keep for later just in case New iridium spark plugs are in and tightened down. Now we'll put these spark plug wires on, starting with the shortest first, with the closest cylinders to the distributor first. Oh, nice. I like how clean these things clip on. The last ones are didn't go on too smoothly. That's number eight. Like these, these are cool. And then number seven. All right, there it is. Fancy new wires, some fancy little wire clippy things, I forget what they're called, came in a little set. Uh, I had some of these as well, but I didn't really need those, unless I just wanted to stick those on somewhere, but they're, yeah, not really, not really going to be useful here in this setup, maybe you could use this somewhere else on like some hoses or something. But yeah, look at that, all fancy looking, bright blue and red, Superman colors. Pretty. Cannot put this little cap back on though, which I really love this thing. It's got all the cylinders marked, or the corresponding cylinders marked. Um, yeah, that just that won't go back on with these. So I'll set that aside, stick it somewhere, I can remember where that goes. I like those uh, heat shields too. To look nice. Looks like they will do the job. I like it. I love it. Matches my little homemade EGR valve plug. Red and blue seems to be the theme we're going with on this engine. Lots more to paint. You have to wait for that though. Gotta make sure she's running tip top. Alright you guys, moment of truth here. Let's see how everything works. Let's see if it still works. Throttle cable is not hooked up because I think I want to replace that.
those uh, screws I put in to the fan shroud are. I need to grind those down. It smells a little different. Not so uh, unburnt, fuely smelling. A fresher, more fresher exhaust smell if that makes any sense. out the pistons a little bit. I hear water works just as good, but I don't like the idea of putting uh, water in my engine. I've done it before, but uh, I started thinking about blow-by and the moisture I found in the uh, valve covers, and I just don't want to do water anymore. Uh, I did it a lot in the past, pouring water into the carburetor, um, but I'm just going to stick with this stuff. That way, if it gets past the cylinders, it's not going to cause a moisture problem in my crankcase. Uh, so I got two different kinds here for some reason. All right, you guys, there it is. Valve seal replacement. Not too bad. Just need to put the air cleaner back on. Um, but while I have that off, I'm going to replace the throttle cable. But yeah, running good. Be on the road here soon enough, so stay tuned. Lots coming up, a few more projects. Throttle cable, maybe something else. Might just include those in an update. So stay tuned, lots coming up. Thanks for watching, bye.